Hour 3, live in Los Angeles. iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1. Christine Leahy is joining me on a Monday in which we've had Roger Goodell, the NFL commissioner. Uh, we've had uh, international star David Beckham just joined us from Miami. Yes, the women in the back there were swooning. They told me they liked his hair, and I should have asked a question about his hair. Uh, Peter King is going to be on in about five minutes. Peter King is joining us from the Super Bowl. Uh, Minnesota, there's our uh, set right there. Uh, he, I'm going to ask him about uh, some Patriot stuff, but he spent some time with Doug Peterson, the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, so that's in five minutes. But uh, the biggest story of the day starts with Tom Brady, so let's go from there. You watch somebody do something for a long time, and then you expect it from somebody, right? Like, we've watched the Patriots here in Super Bowl week. We've been watching this thing now for Rex Ryan's feet, they shipped him out of town. They don't talk until now. So Tom Brady has done this documentary. It's a six-parter. It's called Tom versus Time. And it's a six-parter. And um, it gives you access we've never seen from Tom. He never gave us his kids before. He never let us see inside his house, his property, his diet. It's kind of fascinating stuff. We see his cars. We see his kids. We see his life. We see his diet. We see his team. We see his trainer. We see his workout. I mean, you really get inside, and it's all kind of cool, right? Like, it's all sort of cool. It's private life. Well, what do you know? It's already coming back to bite him. So Tom has this relationship with a radio station in Boston, WEEI Radio. You know, it's your typical kind of northeast intense, edgy, you know, swear a little, that's the brand, get the young male demo. You know, we've seen, uh, you know, Barstool, Deadspin, we're a little edgier, and they play it up, right? So Tom's had this relationship with the station forever. He goes on Monday, sets the tone for the week. But now we know what Tom's family looks like and how they act in his house and his cars and his properties and his lifestyle, and Tom let us in. One of the hosts on this radio station in Boston called his daughter uh, an annoying piss ant. And so when Tom came on this morning for his weekly hit, this is what happened. Stacey had told me that someone had made a comment about my daughter. Or yes, like that. yeah, you, we were, Tom. We were just talking about it. it was Alex Reamer, and you are you can uh, we Jerry and I talked about it Friday. It was a stupid thing to say. We destroyed him for saying it. You, you can say whatever you like. Go ahead. I've tried to come on this show for many years with and showed you guys a lot of respect. I've always tried to come on and you know do a good job for you guys. So you know it's very disappointing when you hear that. Certainly with my daughter or any child, all obviously evaluate whether I want to come on this show again. So I, I really don't have much to say this morning. That's fine. Um, I understand. So That's totally fine. I will. Uh, maybe I'll speak with you guys uh, some other time. Absolutely fine. Have we have understand. All right, Tom, you too. But here's what's interesting to me. So this Thursday, Bill Belichick, who never lets us in, is going to be on a 30 for 30 with Bill Parcells. They finally sat down. They did this in the summer, by the way. And I don't blame my former employer for running it Super Bowl week. The timing's perfect. It's ideal. Patriots in the Super Bowl. But isn't this interesting? Two private guys who never let us in finally decide to go from completely vanilla, no quote, private, you don't get to see anything inside the doors, both roll the dice, Tom Brady lets you into his house and gets burned, and Bill Belichick lets you into his relationship life with Bill Parcells and their antagonistic relationship, and that will air Thursday. Distractions. 17 years of privacy. Now, they're the distracted Super Bowl team. All they're doing. Can't blame the media. Can't. Tom Brady made a decision to let you into his life after all these years and all these rings and both now have created a distraction of their own doing. They went contrary into their brand. They did the opposite of what they preached. Don't talk to the press. Don't give them information. 
Don't go behind the velvet rope. Yes, the guy on radio is a jerk. Not denying that. But once you go reality, once you let people in, this is what you get. People talk about your kids. They talk about your wife. They go on social media and are immature and are vulgar. And that's why most celebrities don't let you into their house, their room, their kitchen, their workout. I'm not here to blame anybody, but I'm telling you it's very interesting. For 17 years, they have been, you don't even get to know our injury report. Gronk, what Gronk? Injured what injury? Both in this Super Bowl let you in. And they now have a distraction. They are now the distracted Super Bowl team. Peter King will join us in about a minute here at 1-800-Flowers.com. Easy to find the perfect Valentine's gift right now. Dozen roses, multicolored, $29.99. Upgrade to $24, 10 bucks more. That's all, 1-800-Flowers.com, code H-E-R-D. For the record, I'm enjoying the documentaries. Um, I like this private life stuff. I think it's fascinating. I remember it, years ago, pre-Kardashians, uh, Barbara Walters was this journalist. And Barbara Walters really forged her way. There were a lot of male anchors, and Barbara Walters was this tough cookie. And she would come on and do journalism. And then she started, she moved into the entertainment division. And she started doing these sit-down interviews with Warren Beatty and Johnny Carson and these, these kind of icons. Um, and it's really funny. I was immediately a huge fan of these. You see Johnny Carson sitting there in his Malibu home and you, you know, you see Warren Beatty, this, you know, this legendary, you know, hunk in LA and she take you behind the scenes. Now, of course, it's, a, it's an industry. Um, and I just, I, when I watch these Tom Brady documentaries, I'm struck by how fascinated I am with the documentaries. Uh, Peter King is now joining us from the Super Bowl via the Coward Global Satellite Network. So, uh, Peter, I was just saying that, you know, for years and years, Brady and Belichick were pretty covert. And now, here we go this Super Bowl, Belichick's got a Bill versus Bill 30 for 30 Thursday, and Brady sort of gets, <laughs> yeah. Brady now gets burned by some idiot on Boston radio who says something. Do you think it's a distraction at all? I don't think so. I don't think it matters. You know what happens, Colin? You know, you have a two-week buildup to a game, and little things like this happen with Brady getting angry at the Boston radio station and you know, the, the Tom versus Time is is this documentary that's out, and Belichick is doing this thing with Parcells. You know, at the end of the day, if Bill Belichick chooses to do a long interview with NFL Films with Bill Parcells sometime last summer, and they show it the week before the Super Bowl, I mean, that's about as much of a distraction as I am to the New England Patriots. So... I don't think any of this stuff matters. And, and, and I'll also remind you and, and everybody listening, watching, you know, I don't remember. It probably is Terry Bradshaw saying that, uh, you know, taunting Hollywood Henderson after a, uh, after a Pittsburgh Super Bowl win over Dallas, you know, taunting Hollywood Henderson for questioning how intelligent he was. All of this stuff that happens in the prior two weeks it's forgotten when the game is played. Nobody talks about it. Nobody asks about it. It's not going to matter. You know, Atlanta feels um, the Seattle New England Super Bowl, the Atlanta New England Super Bowl, and now the Philadelphia Super Bowl. I keep hearing about how much more talented the Seahawks, the Falcons, the Eagles are. And yet Vegas, <laughs> Vegas seems to like New England more than the fans and the press. You spent some time with Doug Peterson, and you've watched both these teams play. I mean, is he a little concerned, Peter, that this feels a little like last year? Hot shot NFC team, hasn't been here before, uh, Belichick, Brady, Mystique. W what's the vibe you get about them facing the current and maybe greatest NFL dynasty ever? Well, I wrote to work on Friday for my column at the MMQB with Doug Peterson. And one of the things that we talked about probably for – six or seven minutes of a 25-minute drive. One of the things we talked about was how Peterson has this concept with his team called the faceless opponent. So when he goes in and starts talking to a team, to his team, he doesn't say, 
Hey, man, boy, this Belichick, he's a legend. And this Brady, he's the best quarterback of all time. He tells Zach Ertz to worry about the guy across from him. He tells Lane Johnson, worry about that defensive lineman across from you. You know, he tells Alshon Jeffrey, you know, you worry about Malcolm Butler. You, you know, study the players you're going to play. All the rest of it is noise. It's fluff. It's meaningless. And he's done a very good job of that. They killed Minnesota. And, you know, that, was, that wasn't even a game by halftime. And they embarrassed Minnesota. And I think the strength of Doug Peterson in this game is that he's seen it all. He's been through it all. He's been to two Super Bowls. Uh, he's backed up Brett Favre. He told Brett Favre what to watch for before the vast majority of his plays in his Green Bay career. He backed up Favre for eight years. So when Nick Foles gets a play in his headset on Sunday, it's going to come from a guy who has been in his shoes before for a long time, for 14 years in the NFL. And that's why I think that I just I, I think the Eagles might lose this game, but it won't be because of any head games between Bill Parcells and Doug Peterson. When you, when you look back, Peter, this is the eighth Super Bowl for Brady and Belichick, and you've covered dynasties. Uh, you covered the Steelers, uh, you and uh, Dr. Z, the, the Steeler dynasty, and then the uh, 49er dynasty, and then there was the Jimmy Johnson Cowboy dynasty, and this certainly qualifies as a dynasty. How is this one different than the others, or is it? Is each dynasty uh, uh, unique to itself? Well, you know, the Steelers basically lasted – you know, six years as far as when they won Super Bowls. They won four in six seasons. And they were good for a while, but they were never the real Steelers after that. Right. Um, you know, and, and, and I think the key to this, to this team is they basically had a great team, and then they reloaded, and they won either two or three more with the second iteration of the team with only Belichick and Brady being the same. Yeah. and everybody else being different all the way down to the kicker. Yeah. So I guess I would say this, Colin. I think that for years we're going to be talking about a team that for 18 years in a row was a prime contender to win a Super Bowl. And in the free agency era, in my opinion, that will never, and underline never, capital N, happen again. You know, Drew Brees is 39, and I thought he looked as good in that second half against Minnesota as I've seen him in years. Big Ben said yesterday, I want to play for three more years. It's, it's, Peter, it seems to me that it used to be that at about 36 years old, a guy was out of gas. <laughs> um, and now guys are 38, 39, and they really, really look like they're still elite for years to come. Is it nutrition? Is it, is it offensive line play? Is it because it's a bubble screen league? I mean, Peter, I can remember quarterbacks being 35, and you could just see them wobble out of the huddle. It doesn't work that way anymore. What's the explanation? I think two things are happening. Tom Brady is drawing a roadmap for players, not just uh, quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, I was with Jason Witten this year. He's 35 years old. Yeah. Um, Jason Witten told me flat out, I'm studying what Brady does because I see what he does and I get the feeling talking to him, being around him and or not not being around him. But but in the limited contact and in reading everything about him, that he has found a solution that strength coaches, weight trainers, everybody has not found, which is pliability, flexibility. And the answer to everything isn't to lift more weights. The answer to everything is to live smart, eat smart, hydrate, and to be pliable rather than being counting on your strength, carrying you, you know, to that next level. Plus, Colin, I think practices are easier. There's no more two-a-days. Yeah. Um, you can only have 14 padded practices during the year. And so, look, you know, you're always at risk of suffering that the jarring hit and the knee injury or the concussion or something like that. But the fact is all other things have been improved to advance longevity as a reason or as, as a, you know, as something that all players as they appro uh, uh, approach their late thirties 
basically understand that it's possible to keep playing well into your 40s. By the way, did you watch these documentaries, these little 15-minute uh, things? Have you seen yeah, them? I think the time... I think the Tom versus Time thing is absolutely incredible. I wrote about it a little bit this morning. And also, I talked to Gotham Chopra, who's Deepak Chopra's son. Yeah. And, you know, I think one of the things you asked, well, why would Brady do this? Why would Brady allow people into his life the way he allowed Gotham Chopra almost, uh, you know, to see everything in his life? And the answer is, you know how when your father would take you on vacation and you would have the old either 8 millimeter film or whatever it was. People of a certain age know that. But, but parents want to take home movies of kids. Well, Tom Brady wants a home movie of his life. He wants to know. He wants there to be a record when he was 40 years old of how he was the MVP of the NFL because that's probably what's going to happen. But, but I, I think the one big thing is Tom Brady understands that someone – who likes him and who admires him is doing this documentary. It's going to be gauzy. It's going to be nice. And why wouldn't it be when you do a documentary of 40-year-old Tom Brady going out and dominating the rest of the league? But I, I think Brady wants to have a view and a snapshot, an extended snapshot, to look back on the rest of his life and for the world to be able to look back on and say, hey, this is how I did it. Uh, by the way, added note, have you seen the documentary by Susan Lacey on Spielberg? Have you seen the HBO Spielberg documentary yet? I haven't, but I love those things. I'll, I'll watch it. I'll, I'll look for it. You, you have got to watch it. There's a part, and it reminds me of Brady. I don't know. I just, I just know you're into that stuff. You and me like our Pete's Coffee and our movie, so go watch that. And Peter, it's great seeing you. <laughs> Good seeing you, Colin. All right. Uh, MMQB.com, MoneyMorningQuarterback.com from our Fox Sports Radio set. Um, oh, by the way, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell was on two hours ago. Uh, he did mention something mm -hmm. that he acknowledged that he was concerned about in the NFL. I thought it was a real uh, moment of honesty from the commissioner. I'm concerned about it. You're concerned about it. He's concerned about it, too, and that's coming up next. Dallas, 11 degrees, New York, 9, Minnesota, minus 2 degrees. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, no, no kidding. That's what I thought. <laughs> Winners in full swing in your HVAC system is working overtime. If you aren't properly maintaining your filters, then you're not breathing quality air. And that air indoors is 100 times dirtier than air outdoors. There's a better way. It's called filterby.com. America's leading provider of HVAC filters, homes, and small businesses. They have over 600 types, custom options, all ship free within 24 hours, plus they're all manufactured right here in America. Filter by all the way up to hospital grade. Dangerous pollen, mold, dust, allergy, aggravating pollution can be gone. You can save 5% at Filter by if you set up auto delivery, so you never have to think about air filters again. So you save some time and you save some money. Just breathe better with FilterBuy.com. That's Filter, B-U-Y.com. FilterBuy.com.